All right, so we're going to be talking about resistivity today. Um, that's what the experiment is titled. But before we get into the actual details of the experiment, I want to point out something, that there are two words up here on the board. And we're going to be talking about resistivity, okay, not resistance. We will be measuring resistance, but the topic today is resistivity. Now, just very quickly, and I don't want to confuse you, so just pay attention for only a moment about Ohm's law. Okay, Ohm's law. says that if we have a voltage potential difference, and if we divide by the resistance, that will tell us how much current there is. Okay? And we'll be looking at Ohm's law in a different experiment. All right? Resistance is measured in ohms. Resistivity is not measured in ohms. We're going to find out what the units of resistivity are, what the unit is, what the units are. Uh, this is not English class. So we'll be talking about this word, resistivity. Okay, so I want you to cement that in your brain. Um, I often see students uh, write down or even say in class resistance when they're really talking about resistivity. Resistivity is a property of, in this case, metals. And we want to discover resistivity from an empirical standpoint. And what that means is we're going to take some data, and then we're going to plot the data. And all the while, we're going to try to come up with a relationship that creates resistivity. Okay. We need to talk a little bit more about resistance, because we will be measuring resistance today, looking eventually for the resistivity. Resistance, you can think of, in, like I've already said, in terms of Ohm's law. And we'll probably talk about this again with Ohm's law, but there's a nice little analogy that you can use for Ohm's law, and it is, it is that of a, um, of a water tower. So what I want you to picture in your mind is a water tower sitting up high, and the distance that water tower is from the ground, we would call that the voltage potential. Okay, in, in dealing with Ohm's law, we wrote it as V over R equals I, but we could also write V is equal to IR. And so if we just take this um, this well right here, and then we have a tube coming down, and it goes down to the ground. So here's our ground. And we can have water flowing, okay? And the water comes out. This distance right here can be thought of as the voltage potential. The size of the pipe is, is going to change how much water comes out, isn't it? It's also going to change the amount of water coming out or the pressure it comes out by how high we put this. So if we have a greater voltage potential or a lesser voltage potential, we would imagine that there's going to be less pressure in the water. Okay? The actual water molecules flowing inside here are analogous to I, the current flow. Right? R is going to be a property somehow associated with this pipe. You could imagine if we had a lot of rough edges inside that pipe and the water was trying to get through, it'd be different than if we had a pipe that was perfectly smooth. That's kind of these, these analogies break down a little bit, but you're getting an idea of what resistance is. Okay. So voltage is a potential difference. Current is the actual flow of the electrons, or in this case, the water. And resistance is the inhibiting of that flow. We measure volts, voltage in volts, and we measure current in amps, and we measure resistance in ohms. We want to find out how resistance changes for a given wire, depending on how long the wire is. Or do you think that the resistance might change at all? If we have a wire that's one meter long and a wire that's 100 meters long, will the resistance be the same or different? So that's the first question we want to investigate about resistance. Is resistance proportional to length? Now, if resistance is proportional to length, what should it look like on a plot? If I plot length here, and I plot resistance here, and if I keep the same wire, but just have longer lengths of it, 
what will the resistance look like? If this is proportional, that means that we can replace the proportionality of the symbol with a constant of proportionality. Okay, and we could rewrite this as R is equal to K times L, just Y equals M times X. That would be a linear relationship or a direct proportion between L and R. If it is proportional, we'll get a straight line. Another question we want to investigate is, what about cross-sectional area? If I have a wire that's really, really small, will it have the same resistance as a bigger wire? A uh, wire that's 100 times bigger in diameter, will that have the same resistance or less or more? Okay, so that's the second question we're going to look at. Is R proportional to area? And by area, I mean the cross-sectional area of the wire. If we're looking down the wire, it's this area right here. Later in the semester, we'll be looking at the area vector. Okay? And it makes a big difference uh, which way this area vector is pointing um, for, instance, induction. But for today, we're just interested in a scalar value, um, the cross-sectional area of the wire. So are those two proportional or not? That's the question. Now let's think about the length. If I gave you that analogy of water flowing through a pipe, and there's some resistance in there because of the stuff that's intrinsic to the pipe, okay? There's some things sticking out, and um, the smooth of the pipe, whatever we're going to change our resistance value. Let's, let's just put some, oh, this is an old pipe, so some calcium deposits and just some other things in there to cause great resistance. And let's have a 10 foot long pipe, okay? Let's measure that resistance and then take our big uh, well of water and just put it up another 50 feet higher. So we're going to have to increase this pipe length by 50 feet. So we're going to have to get more sections of pipe that have the same um, properties inside and stick them all together. So now we have lots and lots more pipe. What do you think is going to happen with the resistance? I like to think of a, um, a traffic on, on a freeway, on a highway. You're, you're leaving campus tonight and, and it's rush hour and you hear on the news that there's traffic backed up from here to Timbuktu and it's many miles away and that's a lot of resistance isn't it? If they said well the traffic's only backed up for the next three blocks that doesn't trouble you too much does it? So it, it, it seems appropriate that if I have more length I'm going to increase the resistance. What about cross-sectional area? Again, you can think of water in a pipe, or you can think about cars on the road. If you're on the road driving, and there's three lanes of traffic, and it's bumper to bumper, and you're enjoying the radio because you're not even moving, and then suddenly those three lanes expand into six lanes, what happens to the resistance on the road? It decreases, doesn't it? You suddenly have the ability to move forward much quicker all those lanes of traffic, those three lanes, all those cars get spread out into six. Okay, and so the resistance goes down. How could we draw a plot of that? We'd have to answer this question and say, no, it's not proportional to area. Instead, the resistance is proportional to one over area. So we'd say that the resistance is proportional to the inverse of the area. So to review what we have so far, we'd say that resistance is proportional to length and resistance is proportional to 1 over area. What we'd like to do is take some measurements today to find out, one, is this true? And number two, can we quantify a constant of proportionality? 
what do we mean by a constant of proportionality? Well, let's create a relationship. Resistance is proportional to length over area. That should work. This plot up here, if we take data and vary the length and measure the resistance, we should see a straight line. And this plot versus um, area, we should see an inverse relationship, which means if we plot 1 over A, we should get a straight line. If we combine these variables, length times 1 over area, we should get a straight line. And here is the essence, right here. Resistivity is embedded in this relationship. Let's talk about a constant of proportionality. If I have resistance is proportional to L over A, the job of the scientist oftentimes when finding a, a direct proportion like this is to replace the proportionality symbol with an equal sign and a proportionality constant. So we can rewrite this and say it's equal to some constant times L over A. This constant is our proportionality constant. What are the units of this constant? We can discover that by looking at this relationship. Let's write out the units for each of the parts. The resistance is measured in ohms. The length, we'll measure that in meters today, and the area will measure in millimeters. So if those are our units of our known measurements, resistance ohms, length in meters, and area in, that's a mistake. Did anybody catch that? I was just checking to see if you're on top of things. That's millimeters squared for area. Okay, so we have a millimeter squared in the area. What should be the units of K. What do we want to end up with after we take the product of K, L, and inverse A? We want to have ohms when we're finished. That requires that the units of K become ohms. That's how we get our ohms over here. But then we need a millimeter squared divided by a meter. Does that make sense? Doing dimensional analysis, we take our supposed units of K, ohms, millimeter squared per meter, and we multiply them by the units of our measurements. So here's meters over millimeter squared for the area, meters for the length. We see the cancellation happen, and we're left with ohms. So those must be the units of K. I don't know if you see what we just discovered. We just discovered through reasoning about the longer the wire I have, the more resistance I have. And the greater the cross-sectional area I have, the less resistance I have. The constant of proportionality, K, has units of ohm millimeter squared per meter. And what that means is that our constant of proportionality, K, is equal to the resistivity. And we just use a Greek letter there, Greek, the Greek letter rho. Um, it's spelled R-H-O if you, if you spell it out phonetically. That's rho. And this rho is the resistivity. And so what are the units of rho? They are ohm millimeter squared per meter. So we would like you to find rho today from nichrome wire. Nichrome wire is, um, has a high resistivity. We have this board here. So this board has nichrome wire on it. And a little warning, by the way, this is not a guitar. 
so don't don't strum the wires. Um, we cannot solder these wires. Uh, nichrome doesn't solder, and so they're just held down with um, with pressure. And in fact, I don't even want you to touch the wires. Okay, we don't want you stretching the wires out. And you can see from these wires that nobody's ever touched them. They're okay. Never mind. But please, please don't touch them. This is nichrome wire, and there's five different cross-sectional areas here. Okay? And the first experiment is going to be measuring one particular cross-sectional area, different lengths for that cross-sectional area. And we'll talk about the, uh, the procedure in the next movie. So we're going to vary length, measure R, and plot R versus L. And note that it's proportional. You want to write that on your plot this appears to be proportional. And then we're going to plot R versus A by varying the length, I mean, excuse me, the cross-sectional area and measuring the resistance. You're going to plot that, R versus A, and you're going to see hopefully a 1 over relationship, 1 over X. And you're going to write on there, this does not appear to be proportional. It looks like an inverse proportional. And then you're going to plot R versus L over A to get this relationship to find rho. If we plot R versus L over A, that slope should be the resistivity, rho. And it has units of what? The slope being ohms millimeter squared per meter for the slope for rho. Something I should mention, rho is inversely proportional to sigma. The Greek letter sigma and rho are inversely related to each other. Rho is the resistivity. It's uh, directly addressing the property inside that wire, just like we talked about that water pipe. What in there was causing that resistance? A measurement of that property is called the resistivity. Conductivity is the sigma. So the conductivity is the exact opposite of the resistivity. The conductivity is talking about, okay, you talked about the properties that are causing the resistance, but what properties in there are allowing the flow? So conductivity and resistivity are, are inverse of one another. So we could rewrite this relationship. We could say that R is equal to rho times L over A. Or we could say that R is equal to 1 over sigma times L over A. In other words, if you had a value for rho or for sigma, the conductivity, if you knew the resistivity, and you knew the length, and if you knew the cross-sectional area, you could actually calculate the resistance in the wire. Would that be important? Well, I think so. You might want to know when you're building something how much resistance there's going to be in this system. And if you know the resistivity, which is a property of that wire, and if you know the length and the cross-sectional area, you can calculate the resistance. Nichrome wire, like I said, has a high resistivity value. What other types of metals can you think of? And do you know if they would have a higher or a lower resistivity value? Let's talk about the, the metal that's on electric stoves. You know that, that coil of wire, it's real thick and wide wire and it just winds around into a circle? and you turn on the stove and it sends electricity through there and it starts to glow red, do you think that's a higher resistivity or a lower resistivity than, say, copper wire? Copper wire is the typical wire used in wiring your house or in sending an audio signal from your, from your amplifier to your speaker. Those are typically copper wires. Which one do you think has a higher resistivity? What would those look like on a plot? If we plotted um, R versus L over A, and let's take 
let's say that green is, is nichrome wire. A green solid line is nichrome wire. And let's just say that we get a plot that looks something like this. And let's say that blue dashed is um, copper. What do you think this line would look like? Are you supposing that the resistivity in copper is greater or less than the resistivity in nichrome? If I said that nichrome has a high resistivity, and then we likened it to, well, getting into the element that's sitting on your electric stove, what would the plot look like for copper? If copper has a lower resistivity, then that means that the plot should have a, a less steep slope, a smaller slope. The resistivity here is less. The resistivity here is higher. So one more thing I thought of is a uh, house wiring. How many of you know when your house was built? There was a problem in the late 70s. See, sometime in the early 70s, some builders, copper was getting really expensive. And builders thought, you know what? Aluminum conducts electricity, and it's a lot cheaper than copper. So let's build some houses, and let's put the wiring in the house to be aluminum instead of copper. Well, guess what the resistivity of aluminum is compared to copper? Uh, let's just say this, this blue one here is the, um, is the copper. The aluminum one would be a lot steeper. resistivity of aluminum is much greater than that of copper. And so what happened was, as soon as appliances got bigger and you know, bigger TVs and bigger uh, refrigerators and freezers and were drawing more current through the house, the resistivity was greater. So guess what happened to the resistance? It went up. And in fact, houses built in the 70s started to go up in flames because the wiring inside the wall was overheating and was igniting. So you might want to go home and find out what year your house was built in. If you're not sure, I'll give you a little trick. You can um, go into the bathroom and take off that lid, I'm not kidding, um, on the toilet tank, take off that lid and turn it over and there's a date stamp in there. Um, they always make toilets in the same year they build the house. You just needed to know that. Length and then measure the resistance. Vary the length, measure the resistance. Then I want you to measure different cross-sectional areas while measuring the resistance. And plot these things and try to find out what resistivity rho is. Don't forget what the units of rho are and how we derive them. We have ohm millimeters squared per meter. And then I'd like you to also calculate the conductivity, okay, the inverse of rho. We're also going to have you work on a method to find the slope and intercept of a line. And for the last plot, because you're going to make three plots, you're going to make R versus L, R versus A, actually four plots, R versus 1 over A, and then R versus L over A. That R versus L over A is the final plot, and we're going to spend most of our attention there. And we're going to have you come up with a a different method besides just asking the spreadsheet, give me the slope and intercept. How can we calculate the slope and the intercept? So that's going to be part of your final analysis. You're going to be finding the resistivity of nichrome wire. If I draw a wire's cross-sectional area, and inside this wire I know I have atoms, and so let's represent those atoms. Each element is made up of atoms that have different amounts of free electrons. Some metals have greater conductivity than other metals, or saying that a different way, some metals have a different resistivity than other metals. And this is a clue into what causes that resistivity to change between the metals. Each atom has free electrons. The availability of those free electrons is directly related to the conductivity. If I have more free electrons available, that allows the current 
to flow through the wire. If I have fewer free electrons, then my conductivity goes down. And of course the resistivity is the inverse of that. And from this diagram we also see that relationship that if I have a larger wire, what have I just done? I just increased with a larger cross-sectional area, I've increased the paths of conductivity, increased, which means my resistance has gone down. And by resistance, I mean that which is measured in ohms. Okay, the, the resistance being found by rho times length 